Hey, True Believers. Chris Mack coming at you with yet again another awesome action figure review. Today we are going over the Marvel Legends Captain America Red Skull Build-A-Figure Wave. And I'm so glad I got my hands on this because I never see this in stores. I, I saw all the movie ones, which not my cup of tea. I'd rather get something that is comic accurate, and that is what you get with this figure. If you want to pick it up, I try checking the regular online places that I talk about nowhere. So, <laughs> I'm about to say, first and foremost, check with your local comic shop and see if someone has traded one in. If not, then you're going to have to dive into the secondary market, and I hope that no one marks it up too high, because this is definitely a cap that you want in your collection. Speaking of which, they have his name down here twice. Why? I don't know. He's got the cool silver one, and then kind of like the generic name branding that they do there. You see the Red Skull build a figure there. Got the spot varnished Captain America shield there, which is super awesome. Come around to the side, and I love this art piece, because it shows how Cap, when he goes into battle, he's serious, but he doesn't have like that rage look that, like, say, Wolverine would have. So just a very decent art piece, and I, I just love it. The muted blues look great. Come around to the back, get a relatively fancy uh, what do you call it? Product shot of them. Get a read up, so I'll make sure to pause it where you guys can read it at your convenience. Same with the figures from the wave, so you can see what you need to build the Onslaught Red Skull. Come around to the side, you get that same awesome art shot, just uh, reversed, I think. <laughs> you come back around to the front, there's Cap, saw the top, nothing on the bottom. So let's get Mr. Rogers out and see if his figure is going to make for a good day in the neighborhood. And here's Cap out of the packaging. As you can see, you get him in a saluting stance, and he just looks absolutely amazing. If you're the kind of that just likes to put them on shelves and pose them, this is definitely one that you'll want to do just to kind of get that very cool America look. Or, you know, you can spin him around with a shield and do what Ant-Man says, and there's a America's ass. Didn't But anyway, even though this is an older Legends figure, I really thoroughly enjoy it. Comic accurate, everything about it. There are a couple things that are going to drive you crazy, and we'll get into those in a moment. But now that we've had a moment to gush over how cool this Captain America looks, let's take a closer look that everything is entailed with him. Quick backstory on Cap. His first appearance was Captain America Comics number one back in March of 1941. And this was actually back when Marvel was still called Timely Comics. So uh, there's one to grow on for you. He was created by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby. And the way his origin goes, the movie kind of followed it. They kind of merged his, uh, what do you call it, his origin with an Avengers comic. But in terms of actual continuity, Steve Rogers attempts to enlist in the army, but he's rejected to his uh, frail body. So what happens is his tenacity to want to join attracts notice of General Chester Phillips and Project Rebirth. That being said, you know, uh, Rogers is used as like a guinea pig for the super soldier serum. And uh, the serum, you know, was made by Dr. Josef Reinstein, I think is how you pronounce it. And of course that's how he immediately got all his biceps and just the swole Captain America that we know now, and it was a popular comic during the war, because I mean, the first issue had him punching Hitler out in the face, which you're just like, yes! <laughs> but after the war, I think people needed a break because uh, his book kind of started to slow down and it was discontinued permanently in 1953 with issue number 78. Now, what's cool is I've read this before and then Stan Lee echoed it on Comic Book Men is they asked him to try to create a team book, The Avengers. And so when he teamed up with Jack Kirby, he wanted to introduce Cap back into the, the comic world because he loved the book. So in Avengers number four from March 1964, Stan explained that in the final days of World War II, Steve fell from an experimental drone plane into the North Atlantic Ocean. And you know, he spent decades frozen in a block of ice in the state of suspended animation, as we saw in the show, but uh, the difference here is he becomes, you know, he's, he's a capsicle. He becomes a block of ice, and he's discovered by Namor, and uh, there's Eskimos that are worshiping him, worshiping him as like a frozen god. Uh, Namor gets mad at himself, throws Cap's ice uh, block 
back into the ocean, and the Avengers uh, discover him. And so that's how issue four kind of happened, and that's how Cap came to be as he we all know and love him now. And I think it was a great idea because it gave this man at a time. You know, he was frozen at a time where he had grown up. He was in, set into certain ways. Now it's a whole new generation, and he has to kind of learn to adapt. So great way to just have that sort of context and drama in the comics. <clears throat> now, for a side note real quick, since we're about to get into the accessories, is the Cap Wolf head here. It's first appearance was uh, Captain America 405 and the story was called The Man and the Wolf. I think it was four parts and what I liked about it is I kind of skimmed through it, I'll eventually review it, is when he's a werewolf he goes into a freaking battle with Wolverine and I mean how much more cooler can he get? Now Cap, like Iron Man, has a rich history so make sure to check out any omnibuses or singles that you can get your hands on because you know, just like Superman, he's one of a very much of our iconic pop culture history. Now, two other arcs that I do want to recommend reading are the 2006 Civil War, where Tony Stark wants to have superheroes register their, their uh, what do you call it, their real alter egos. Cap goes rogue, and he just knows how to kick butt. And then on the flip side to that, make sure to check out the 2012's Avengers vs. X-Men, where Cap wants to take Hope into custody, because the Phoenix Force is after her and Cyclops has had enough of people detaining the mutants, especially after what happened with uh, M Day, where was it 50% or 90% of the mutant population loses their powers. The only thing I will say in wrapping up this backstory make sure to avoid secret empire like the plague. Just no. No, 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 no. <laughs> with that said, let's go ahead and get into the accessories, and I want to talk about. First, the accessories that I hate the most. Now, they were a cool concept, but the reason that they suck is they're the straps that go on his arms. And the downfall here is, okay, you loop them on, and that's the wrong side, as per usual. <laughs> Jeez. Can't tell left from right is unless his arms pivoted down like so, this thing is just loosey goosey and falls off. And the only thing that you can kind of do is after you put them both on it, they'll actually stay, which getting them on and off is a pain in the rumpus. As you can, you know, you can port the shield in and it kind of keeps them in place. But I wish instead they would have actually made this like a, an actual, what's the word I'm looking for? Like actual straps where Somehow it could have like looped under here to attach or whatever, kind of like a, a gun holster. Because these, I mean, look at that. that it, it's obnoxious. They're, they're useless at that point. They're such a cool idea to make them look like he has a, a shield strap or something like that. But gumma, every time they fall off, it just it makes you want to crawl up the wall and get frosted, as I say. Now, the next accessory that he comes with that's really cool, and we just talked about a moment ago, is the cap wolf head. And I like that the attention to detail on the eyes are red to kind of get that blood-hungry vamp uh, vampire werewolf look. Teeth, awesome. You can see the gum lines. You can see the teeth very much. In all, you know, reminds me of an American werewolf in uh, London. Nose, nice and black as it should be. Light the rip cap, uh, cap skull to show his transformation. The wolf ears, <coughs> excuse me, look good. The layering of the fur, even though it's plastic, still, when you look at it from a distance, it's not bad. It looks good for what it is. The only thing here, speaking of this head, is even though it's a welcome accessory, because anytime you get accessories, it's just like, woohoo! I wish that they would have given us instead a Steve Rogers head, because that would have been perfect for a lot of photography reasons. But instead, we got this one, which is still going to be fun, especially to do some more in the wash, you know, like universal monster type shots. But again, I really wish we would have gotten a Steve Rogers head instead, ultimately. The next two things, other than um, the fisted hands that he comes with, he comes with two of those, which are on his body right now. I like that these options of hands we get. So we get kind of the finger pointing, which is kind of cockeyed, like, that's all right. We can always warm that up and straighten it out. 
But you know how Cap's always leading the Avengers, and he's like, we're going, Avengers! Maybe pick your nose, too. Come here. <laughs> anyway, so I like the pointing finger. Very cool idea to kind of give him that. And uh, when you get him into an action pose, you know, assembling the Avengers, very awesome stuff there. The other hand that I do like, too, is the saluting hand. Just being able to, you know, do a salute off the, off the brow there. Just a very cool idea. Or, you know, you can just do ninja chop. There's, there's that option, too, but why would you with a cap hand? Anyway, the saluting hand, very awesome. Appreciate it. Red looks good on it. The last thing, I always save the best for last, of course, is Cap's vibranium shield. Now, I'm not 100% sure if his shield in the comics was actual vibranium. If you guys know, let me know down in the comments. The earlier ones that I read just said that it was bulletproof, and I think that was long before Black Panther anyway, so there was no Wakanda, no vibranium, etc., so forth. But I love the reflectant in the light. As you can see, the reds look beautiful, the whites look good, the blue looks good. I got a bit of a, a tinge here on my blue, which, oh, it slays me, but you don't want to scratch it up any more than it could possibly get. You come on the inside, and here, this is neat, is you attach the shield with this thing so that you can get it on his wrist, which of course be careful because over time this can get worn and snap. So I try to do that sparingly. But then what's also cool is I like how Hasbro got creative with this earlier figure. And again, be careful because you don't want these the little pegs inside here to bust as you gently pull that back and we get the peg which ports into that hole in his back. So you know you can have a little cap going back and reaching for a shield to throw. Just a cool idea overall. Now that's all the accessories that he comes with. As for the paint accessories on Cap himself, very, very beautiful. I like the blue in the eyes. They did a really good job of making sure not to let that streak. Thankfully no googly eyes on this figure. The A looks good and I like how it's slightly raised off the skull cap. The flesh tone looks right. I like the dimple on the chin, all the line work here to make it look realistic. Same thing that when they put on these masks, how you can kind of see how the skin molds underneath. And you know, the wings are iconic on Cap. I'm just glad that they're not big and ridiculous like they were back in the day. I'm glad that it's more muted and up to the side here. Blue, very nice and bright. The white star on his chest looks good. Same on the back, you just have to avoid the porthole. And of course, one thing that always makes me laugh is how people say, Captain America doesn't have 50, you know, what is it, 51 stars? If I'm wrong, feel, make, feel, feel free to make fun of me. But anyway, and then of course we have the, the flag here. And it's like he's Captain Texas. I remember someone saying that in a meme and that just made me laugh. His gloves, I like how they're big and flared out to the sides. White on the arm looks good. Blue on the chest looks good. I like how the, the gloves kind of part here. Just adds for a nice classy look. I like the silver of the belt buckle, bucket. Buckle? Bucket. <laughs> belt looks good going all the way around with all the loops. Blue on his pants. Looks great. Goes all the way around. No changes there. And I like, I always loved how his boots flare out and fold down like that. I just, I don't know. I just thought that was a really cool design choice. I don't know if they did that to be cool or if there was supposed to be a functionality to them. But I think it looks great nonetheless, especially all the red, as you can see, no scuffs. Just overall, very beautifully done uh, figure. Now for articulation, even though he's an older figure, he's still relatively bendy, so let's get into it. Head can go down, I think it's on a double joint, so you can go down that much. I just wish that they would have done the same for the back, so you can only look about that high. Head twist that way, head twist that way, arms spin a full 360. And remember to warm up your figure, guys. I've been warming this one up, and he's still very stiff. So I can get mine up about that way, spin it about that much. I'm sure if you all warm it up a little bit more, which I could, but I think there's just a very stiff joint in there, which is frustrating. Does twist at the waist. Ab crunch that way, and ab crunch back better than the front, which is, come on. And then, of course, oops, sorry, he also does have the uh, upper bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, hands can spin 
360 as long as you're careful. Hand go up. Hand go down. Legs can go about that far. Can kick really well forward. And then I just, with these older figures, I hate this butt plate here because it hinders you from being able to pull the leg out. I'm glad that a lot of newer figures have worked that out. <clears throat> but because of it, you can't really push his leg back all that much. Foot goes up about that much, down, ankle pivot, upper thigh cut, boot cut, double jointed knees. So like I said, even though he suffers from a couple of problems of the older figures, still, overall, absolutely beautiful piece here. Now to put Cap up against some of his allies and villains, here's the 80 years Iron Man, here's the AIM Scientist Supreme from the Zemu Build-A-Figure Wave, the Red Skull from the supervillain Zemu Build-A-Figure Wave, and the Walmart exclusive Black Widow, which I absolutely love and cannot wait to review this one. And I just figured it was apt, because back in Tales of Suspense, when they had Iron Man in the book and then they brought Cap in, they were always going up against these two villains so it just really made sense and then of course Natasha just kicks all sorts of ass and they scale well yes they're older like Cap's probably the oldest in the bunch followed by her and the 80 years and then these two are just recently new and they look good I kind of like that the red skull sort of towers over Cap same with the aim agent and then Cap and Tony to me look good I mean Tony would be, in my opinion, a little bit taller because of the armor, and that just makes sense. Same thing with Natasha, as she's a little more petite, she's a little bit smaller than Cap. I'm glad that they kept scaling in mind. It just really helps when you're trying to do photography or when you're posing on a shelf. So you don't, I mean, you know, you have the ability of depth of field, but sometimes you don't want to do that. You just want to put them side by side, and I feel like Hasbro kind of nailed it with these figures. Overall, I really do love this Captain America. Yes, it suffered, the mold itself suffers from the same flaws of this time period where, you know, you got the, the butt piece in the way, the torso kind of not being as bendy as you want it to be. But that aside, this is a very well sculpted, beautifully looking, comic book accurate Captain America, both from the head sculpt that we saw to the Cap Wolf from uh, that very ridiculous Captain America story. So you get a lot with this character. The only thing I do wish that they would have given him was instead of the Cap Wolf head, I wish we could have gotten a Steve Rogers head. That would have been a much more welcoming thing, kind of like how the, uh, what is it, the 80 Years Iron Man, I think it was, got the Tony Stark head, and that was a very welcome sight. So I kind of wish we would have gotten that with this Cap. Putting that aside, I still highly recommend this thing. The shield's beautiful. Just make sure to be careful with the clip. You know, you get all the awesome, you know, like the pointing finger, punching figure, uh, fingers, uh, figures, and then the, uh, what do you call it, the regular clasp hands for other things. But yes, guys, this is an awesome Captain America. Highly, highly recommend it. If you have enjoyed it, Please, first and foremost, as I said at the beginning, check with your local comic shop and see if someone has gotten one traded in. If not, then I really do hope that you'll get a good deal in the secondary market because some of that stuff, you look at it and you're just thinking, that is intense. If you have enjoyed this review, we really would appreciate it if you take a moment to hit like, share, and subscribe. Helps the club channel more than you could possibly know. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that fancy little Avengers bell next to subscribe, that way as we continue to upload content, you guys can come to the channel. We love talking with you all and hearing your feedback down in the comments below or our social media pages, which I'll make sure to leave the links down in the description. So with all that said, photo slideshow coming up next, and I hope you all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading, and happy hunting, true believers.